So the lecture outlines. In this video lecture, I'm going to talk about one of the important genera under the family Diphylobothridae, that is Diphylobothrium. And throughout this lecture, I'm going to talk about the morphological features, life cycle, pathogenic significance, clinical manifestation, finally, diagnosis of a parasitic infection caused by Diphylobothrium latum. And the disease is called Diphylobothriasis. For Spirometrum and Sonoid, please watch my video on this parasite. So this slide is just to remind you uh, where we are. We're going to discuss about, in this video lecture, about the Diphylobothrium latum infection in different animals under the family Diphylobothridae. So before I start talking about the genus Diphylobothrium or the species Diphylobothrium latum, uh, I would like to talk about the difference between cyclophyllid and pseudophyllid cystoid. So basically, we are starting all the parasite under two order. One is cyclophyllidia and another one is pseudophyllidia. So the parasite that are under this order they are known as cyclophyllid cystoid. And similarly, those parasites which are under this order, they are considered as pseudophyllid cystoid. So if you know the common characteristics of these of this two order, then you can apply those features when you're going to study about individual parasites. So the first one, first differential point the scolex. So you know that uh, in the cyclophyllid cystoid there are four suckers and on top of this uh, structure there is a cone shaped structure which is also known as rostellum and in this cystoid this rostellum may be may possess hooks or without hooks. If there is hooks on this rostellum they are considered as arm cystoid, if there is no hooks on the rostellum, they are considered as unarm cystoid. But in case of the pseudophyllid cystoid, there is no suckers on them. So instead of suckers, they will have brothria. What is brothria? Brothria is the muscular fold and the function is same. That is, they are also used for the attachment with the host. Next differential point is the neck. So in case of the pseudophyllid parasite, the neck is well developed, that is conspicuous. But in case of the pseudophyllid, the neck is less developed or inconspicuous. Next, we're going to talk about the reproductive organs in cyclophyllid and the pseudophyllid. So you can remember, uh, a cystoid can possess a single set of genital organs or double set of genital organs. If you look at this picture, you can see there are two sets of genital organs located in each of the proglottid. So, in case of the cyclophyllid, cyclophyllid parasite, they may possess either single set of genital organs such, an, such as uh, tenia solium or tenia cisinata, and even they may possess double set of genital organs such as Monigia expansa, Monigia venideni, Diphalidium caninum. And what about the parasite under this suborder? So you can see only one set of genital organs uh, in each of the proglottid uh, in case of the pseudophyllid cystoid. And the next one is genital pore. So as this parasite may pause either one set of genital organs or two sets of genital organs. So genital pore could be one or two. But here, only one set of genital organs. So only one genital pore would be there. The next differential point is arrangement of the vital area. So in case of this uh, order or parasite under this sub uh, order, uh, the vital area is compact. That is, they are not scatteredly located throughout the segment. 
but in case of this parasite that is a parasite under this suborder this vital area is located scatteredly throughout this uh, segment you can see if you look at very closely you can see some of the dots white dots uh, they are actually the vital area and the black dots they are uh, actually the testes so in the for this parasite the vital area and testes uh, distributed throughout the segment okay let's move to the next slide cystodes under these two suborder they have uh, some unique characters in their egg so in my introductory lecture on cystodes i have talked about uh, the morphology of a typical egg produced by the cystode if you can remember this is one of the eggs of the cystode so they have different parts or different layers uh, in their eggs the first one is it's called embryophore so you can see there are six hooks that is why they they are some uh, they are also known as hexacanth embryo and this is encircled by a layer which is called oncospiral membrane and the next two layer comprises uh, that is this two layer they known as embryophore and after this embryophore is encircled by another layer which is known as uh, capsule or eggshell so based on this embryophore characteristics of the embryophore we can differentiate uh, uh, the eggs of cyclophyllid and the pseudophyllid for this uh, parasite under this group the embryophore is striated but here the embryophore is ciliated so due to presence of this structure they, uh, this is also known as that is ciliated embryophore is also known as coracidium diphylobotrium latum this parasite is also known as broad tapeworm or fish tapeworm and they are also called largest tapeworm of human due to its size and these parasites uh, can be found in man dog cat pig polar bear and different other fish eating mammals this parasite lives in a small intestine of this final host there are two intermediate hosts uh, the first one is copy pod crustacean that is cyclops so maybe you are not uh, aware of what is cyclops so cyclops is one of the most common genera of freshwater copy pods comprises over 4000 species and these individuals may range from 0.5 to 5 millimeters in long and they are mostly found in fresh water and these cyclops uh, act as the intermediate host for the completion of life cycle of diphylobotrium latum and another parasite that is called dracunculus medinensis and the common name of that parasite is called guinea worm and the second intermediate host for this particular parasite is pleuros, uh, different freshwater fish and in this fish pleurosarcoid will be developed so this is the picture of prosarcoid this is very very tiny structure around you can see the scale bar to understand or to assume what would be their size and this will be developed in cyclops and another metacystode that is called pleurosarcoid this is also a very tiny structure and this will be developed in the musculature of different freshwater fish morphological features of diphylobotrium latum the adult parasite is very very long it may range 2 to 12 meters or even up to 20 meters in length and the proglottid is around 1 to 2 centimeter wide color of this parasite is grayish to yellow in color and there is a dark central marking located in the middle of the middle of each proglottid so this is uh, due to the 
location of uterus with eggs and microscopic characteristics includes there is no uh, suckers on their scolex instead of suckers uh, it causes two muscular structure which is also known as uh, botria and I have, uh, when I discuss about the differences between the parasite under the cyclophyllidae and pseudophyllidae, I talked about different features of uh, features of the parasite under the pseudophyllidae. So you can apply those features here. And what about the neck compared to the cystode under the cyclophyllidae? Their neck is less developed or inconspicuous and what about their proglotid proglotis is almost square shaped although it uh, look like rectangular and uh, there is only one set of genital organs located in each of the proglotid and you can see two ovaries here ovaries lobulated and there is branching of the the black uh, structure is called the uterus and uterus has also lateral branching on each side to accommodate more eggs and you can see the vital area and the testes are scattered delocated throughout this throughout each of the proglotid so the morphological features summary i have talked about that the adult tapeworm may range 2 to 12 meters or even they may reach up to 20 meters. This is one of the broadest tapeworm of human due to their breadth. So it is around one to two centimeter uh, wide. Color, grayish to yellowish color, and there is a dark central margin due to presence of uterus with the eggs. And there is no scolex, uh, sorry, there is no uh, suckers on the scolex. Instead, they will have to Bothria. So Bothria is the whole first organs or whole first group or muscular longitudinal groups. The function of these uh, groups is to attach with the final host, that is host. The neck is less conspicuous compared to the parasite uh, under the order cyclophyllidae. And the mature and the gravid proglotid are almost square shaped and they will have a central genital orifice for each of the segment i will show you in a moment another important features is one set of genital organs located uh, in each of the proglotids so you can see there are different genital male genital organs and female genital organs located in this segment and there is numerous testes and yolk glands lie in the lateral field so you can see the black doors are the vitaline gland and the white doors are the testes so they are mixed together and they will be located scatteredly throughout each of the proglotid and ovary is bilobed there are two ovaries and each of the ovaries uh, lobulated and another important features is the uh, lateral branching or lateral lobes of uterus and each of the from each side of this ovary there will be four to eight lobes and you can see there is a there is an opening this is called uterine pore and next to it there is another opening this is called genital pore so the genital pore is genital pore opens ventrally if you look at this picture this is the rear view of the segments so genital pore is located uh, in the middle of the segment and it opens ventrally and this is the ovary okay life cycle of diphylobotrium latum before talking in detail about the life cycle of this parasite, you should know some of the important features regarding this parasite. So the type of life cycle, that is it is an 
indirect life cycle. Final host is man, dog, cat, pig, polar bear, and different other fish eating mammals. Location of this parasite is the small intestine of this final host. There are uh, two intermediate hosts. The first one is Cropipod crustacean, that is Cyclops. And in this intermediate host, prosarcoid will be developed. And the second intermediate host is different freshwater fish. And in this fish, clerosarcoid will be developed. And in the life cycle of this parasite, there is also involvement of paratinic host that is different large fishes or predator fishes which intakes the small fishes that acts as second intermediate host. For the completion uh, of the life cycle of this parasite, it will take around three to five weeks, but the minimum period required for the completion of this life cycle is around three weeks in dog. This is the life cycle of different diphylobothrium tapeworms. We will consider this life cycle for diphylobothrium latum. The parasite is located in the small intestine of different final host, and a single parasite can produce 100,000 eggs per day. So that is, the adult parasites are highly prolific. So these eggs in the gravid proglodid are passed through the feces. And these eggs are unembryonated. So embryonation will be started uh, by several weeks. And when these eggs will come in contact with the water, the coracidium will be developed. And in the, in the water bodies or in water, they will have to produce this structure that is coracidium. And this coracidium will be intact by this frost intermediate host that is cyclops. So in the body of the cyclops by two to three weeks, a structure will be developed that is called prosarcoid. And later on, uh, the cyclops will be further uh, ingested by different small fishes in their body. Another structure will be developed that is called pleurosarcoid. So these small fishes act as the second intermediate host. And sometimes these small fishes further intake by different big fishes, or we can consider these fish as predator fish. So in the musculature of these big fishes, the same structure will be insisted. So the final host that is dog, cat, different uh, kinds of bear, man, will be infected after ingesting uh, the musculature of this fish or the small fishes or the offals. So and, uh, this is very important to consider the transmission, how this, uh, the transmission of this parasite can be happened. So man is really, when the man intakes the raw fish or the less cooked fish or inadequately boil fish then the final host that is man can be infected but the uh, dog or different other uh, cat they may be infected um, uh, by ingesting the musculature of this fish as well as the offals and for the minimum time required for the completion of this uh, life cycle is around uh, three weeks in dog but it takes around uh, three to five weeks for the completion of the life cycle of this parasite. Pathogenic significance and clinical signs uh, during diphylobotriasis or diphylobotrium latum infection. So one of the important reasons for starting this parasite because uh, this parasite causes vitamin B12 deficiency in men and animals. So in case of the light infection, uh, it is asymptomatic, but in mild to heavy infection in animal, uh, different clinical signs such as intermittent diarrhea, constipation, abdominal sign can be found. In man, uh, the signs are also non-specific. This include abdominal pain and loss of weight. 
but one of the uh, important clinical sign is vitamin b12 deficiency and this is actually the macrocytic hypochromic anemia resembling to pernicious type anemia so vitamin D, b12 deficiency uh, occurs in heavy infection and in one of the study uh, it was observed that diphenylbutyrium latum absorbs 10 to 50 times higher vitamin b12 from the intestine of the host compared to other parasite so in fish it also produces some pathology as well as some clinical sign or findings uh, you know that this pleurocyphers will be encysted in the viscera and musculature of the freshwater fishes and due to the migration of these larval stages it may produce damages in the musculature and sometimes sterility and even death of the fish so diagnosis of diphenylbutyrium latum infection or diphenylbutyriosis it is uh, hard to diagnose this parasitic infection by observing clinical signs or clinical findings but confirmatory diagnosis can be can be done based on coproscopy after uh, during coproscopy characteristics X can be found and these eggs are golden brown in color and operculated sometimes it could be confused with the eggs of fasciola but the size of this egg is almost half of the uh, half the size of the egg of fasciola species so these are the reference books that have that i have used during preparing this uh, presentation and i have also used a lot of uh, open source information from internet and finally as usual thank you so much for watching this video